that was incompatible with God. That man was killed on the cross. The reality of the fact in Christianity is we are born of the Spirit, but we are discipled by the Word. Welcome, Welcome to Jubilee Christian Church, Thicker Road. Understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of God that is in you. We, we preach Christ. Amen. Put your heart in it. Put your heart in it. Put your heart in it. Hallelujah. Enjoy him. Enjoy his praises. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Jesus. Are you sure? I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope. I put my hope in your holy word. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. I am stable. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I have a living hope. I have a living hope. I have a future. I have a future. God has a plan for me. God has a plan for me. Hope is I'm sure. I have a living hope. I have a future. I have a future. God has a plan for me. Oh, please, I'm sure. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in your 
altar. We boast of our God. We boast of our God.
we give you all the honor. Receive all adoration, oh God. Receive all the praise. Open your mouth and just offer him worship. Lord, receive our shout. Receive everything that we have to offer, Lord, this afternoon. We give you honor, we give you honor, we give you honor, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord. To kona sababu ya kusema asante. Asante kwa wema wako. Asante kwa uku wako. Asante kwa rehema nako. Asante kwa fadhili zako. Asante kwa sababu haucha badilika. Wewe ni yule yule, wewe ni mwaminifu. Unasaili yeshima na utukufu bwana. Come on, honor him with your worship. Honor him with the lifting of your voice. Sababu ya kukuwa budu Nina sababu ya kukusifu Ukuwa ko, ukuwa ko Na uwamini fuwa ko
shout and say the covenant of grace amen let's look at genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 genesis 3 15 hallelujah praise god chapter 3 and 15 he says and i will put an between you and the woman 
and between your seed and her seed. All right? He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You shall bruise his heel. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11. 7, 11. Hebrews 7, 11. Amen. The Bible says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not called according to the order of Aaron? The next verse, he says, For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priesthood who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. It tells us, why the other covenant was annulled in verse 18 it it was weak and it was unprofitable can you give me that in the amplified version amplified version the bible says the same verse amplified so a previous physical regulation and commandment is cancelled because of its weakness and ineffective ineffectiveness and uselessness, all right? For the law never made anything perfect, but instead a better hope is introduced through which we now come close to God. And it was not without the taking of an oath that Christ was made priest. For those who formerly became priests received their office without its being confirmed by the taking of an oath by God. But this one was designated and addressed and saluted with an oath. The Lord has sworn and will not regret it or change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Praise the name of Jesus. The section that I've read from the book of Hebrews just tells us why the covenant had to be annulled. And it tells us that when the covenant was changed, there was, of course, the need to change the priesthood. Praise God. And therefore, us as believers, it's important for us to understand under which priesthood we operate, under which covenant we operate, because the priesthood cannot be changed and the covenant remains the same. So the Bible says that the law, the covenant that came by the law, was annulled. The reason for that is that it could not make anything perfect. It was ineffective. It was weak in making people perfect. So it was changed, and the priesthood was also changed. And a covenant and a priesthood was brought and put in place that has the capacity of making us perfect. Praise God. So that is very, very important. So under which priesthood do we operate? In which order? Are we under the Aaronic or the priesthood of Aaron or are we under the priesthood of Melchizedek? Which priesthood are we? under Melchizedek. If you are under the priesthood of Melchizedek, then under that priesthood there is a covenant. 
Under that priesthood, there are laws that govern that priesthood. So you cannot operate under the order of Melchizedek using the law that was given through Moses. Are we together? The Bible says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through who? Came through Jesus Christ. So we are under that priesthood. And under that priesthood is where we find grace. Praise God. Under that order is where grace functions. Is where grace operates. Hallelujah. For you to understand grace, I'm talking about the grace covenant or the covenant of grace. For you to understand the grace of God, it's important for you and I to understand the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God just means that God does what he wills or God does what he wants. That is in Psalm chapter 115 and verse 3, that God does what he wants. So it tells me that the grace of God is the will of God, the purpose, the plan of God in manifestation. So the grace, there is that 115, yeah, 115. The grace of God is therefore the expression of God's sovereignty. All right? God's freedom to do what he wants to do. The Bible says, but our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. So what is it that has pleased him? Amen. What is it that has pleased him? It has pleased him to release his grace and to pour his kindness upon us. We read that in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Can you go to Ephesians chapter 1, the New Living Translation, NLT, Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. From verse 5, uh, from verse 7, New Living Translation. He says, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. All right. He has been showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan yeah, to fulfill what? To fulfill his own good pleasure. So redemption and salvation pleases God. He did it because it pleases him. All right? It is according to his good pleasure that you prosper, that you are free, that you live victorious lives. It is according to his good pleasure that you are blessed in all things, according to what he has done in Christ. It is according to his good pleasure that you are healthy. Beloved, I wish above all things that you might be in health. You might prosper and be in what? In health. That is according to his good pleasure. It pleases God when his children are doing well. Praise the name of Jesus. That is his pleasure. Continue with the, with the next verse. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. Verse 11, he says, that Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, he has received, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance. He makes everything work out. How? According to his plan. Praise God. So everything that God is doing, he's doing to fulfill his pleasure. According to his plan. Praise the name of Jesus. And me and you are right in the middle of that plan. Amen. You are God's agenda. Tell your neighbor you are God's agenda. Okay, the plan and the agenda of God revolves or centers around you to redeem you, all right, and to express and to pour out his loving kindness towards you. That is the plan he had. And to make you what he had, yeah, the plan he had about you from the very beginning. This means he was free to do all these things. He was free to exercise his power in redemption, to exercise his might. He was free to use whatever resources he had 
to fulfill that will. And that will was fulfilled in the expression of what we call grace. Amen. The Bible says we now stand in the grace of God. Amen. That is where we stand. All right. And all the benefits and all the privileges and all the blessings that have been given to you from what Jesus did, the benefits of his death and the resurrection is what we are calling grace. Amen. Can you give me First Peter chapter 1 verse 10? That is what we are calling what? Grace. And the Bible says this grace, meaning this salvation, these benefits, these privileges were promised to you by the prophets. Of this salvation, the promise have inquired and searched carefully. Who prophesied what? Of the grace that would come to you. They were prophesying those things that would come to you. And the Bible says that this grace they prophesied, according to verse 11, the Bible says, searching or what manner of time, the spirit which was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and what? And the glories that would follow. So the grace they were talking about had to do with the sufferings of Christ and what? The glories that would follow. Meaning there are glories, there are things that have followed the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And those things are yours. Those things are yours. Bonas if you were son. So they were declared by those who preach the gospel. And that is what we do here. We make it plain. What difference does Jesus make? I wrote that book. Please read that book. The Bible says they were declared, verse 12. They were declared by those who preach the gospel. They were reported to you, verse 12. Amen. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have done what? Who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's very important for you to note what are you being told by those who preach the gospel. We are not here to talk about the mango tree outside your grandmother's house. No, we are not here to talk about this or that. We are here to proclaim to you the glories that have come to you since Jesus died. After Jesus died and rose again, what is it to your advantage? What is it to your benefit? How does it affect your life? This is what we declare. This is what we teach you. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you following me? And the good part of it is that no one compelled God. No one forced God. No one untwisted God. It came out of his own behest and volition. He decided of himself that he would choose you. Amen. He decided of himself that he would pour this kindness and this grace upon your life. He decided before the foundations of the earth that you would belong to his family. That you would be his heir and co-heir together with Christ. He decided beforehand that you would experience his grace. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this pleases him. This pleased him. He loves it when you are enjoying the privileges that he has given. Amen. You know there are believers who have so much grace. They are saving. They are living their life as if they are saving grace. They are saving Nehemiah Isisha. Let me tell you, all of us are going to prosper to the highest level. And the grace will never be affected. Why? It is limitless. You know something limitless cannot come to an end. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. So right now you are standing in grace. Praise the, praise the name of Jesus. I want to illustrate something I illustrated in the Bible study. For those who don't come to the Bible study. You know many people when they read that God has poured out his love. Or God has poured out his grace. They think it's the way you pour water with a basin. Because you No, that's not what it means. So when people think about pouring, get another glass. So they think this is the love of God and the grace of God and then it was poured it was poured on them like that. 
they have poured. That's what they think. But that's not what that means. It means he poured and keeps on pouring. Like this. 2,000 years are gone, 2,021 years, and it is still pouring. Amen. And it is not poured in vain. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is still pouring, meaning now, because it is limitless. Are you getting? It is limitless. When you pour something limitless, at what time does it end? Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 in Amplified. When you pour something limitless, at, which, at what point does it come to an end? So even now that you are seated there, child of God, it is still pouring. That is why his goodness and his mercy follow you every day of your life. That is why his mercy is new every morning. Why? Because it is still pouring. The Bible says he did this so that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the what? Immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace and merited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards me. Somebody say towards me. Towards. Meaning there is a limitless grace that he is still revealing towards you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? So that is important. And one thing I love about this, eh, nobody told him to do it so no one can tell him to stop. Yeah. Amen. Nikupenda kwake. Amen. It has pleased the Lord that he might do that. It has pleased the Lord that now his people may experience the benefits for which he died. It has pleased the Lord that his people be seated together with his son in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. It has pleased the Lord that he may come and dwell in you. It has pleased him. It is his pleasure. It is his delight. It is his sovereignty at work. <laughs> so grace is the sovereignty of God. His freedom to choose, he chose you. His freedom to decide, he decided you. His freedom to do what he wants, he, he blessed you. With every spiritual blessing in a heavenly places. Giving you uh, 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 everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you really want to see the heart of a person, look at what they do freely. Freely with no incentives and no threat. If they are not threatened of danger and they are not given any incentive. What do they do? Yeah, you can tell their heart. Alright, because many people do things because of incentive. Because they have something to benefit or gain. Others do stuff to avoid punishment. And to avoid judgment. And to avoid danger. But if you get somebody... And look at what they did. What is it that he had to gain apart from our souls? Are you getting? So in that freedom, he decided to give, to give us grace. Amen. To give us all the benefits and the privileges that come from the death of his son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that is why we confidently and boldly tell you that healing is God's will. God doesn't want anybody sick. Because he died for all to be saved and he died for all to be healed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. He paid the price for all. You can no longer continue debating whether it is the will of God for you to prosper. Whether it is the will of God for you to have peace of mind. He says my peace I give you. Praise the name of Jesus. It is no longer you, for you to ask God, is it your will, oh God, that I may move forward? Is it your will that I, I, I may... Pro no, today I tell you, it is his will. It is his will that you operate in the blessing of Abraham. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross was to break the curse of the law and to open up the door the limitation of the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham was only confined to the Jews. 
to those who are of the flesh, born of Abraham through the flesh. But now through Jesus Christ, all those who are in Christ Jesus are also the children of Abraham. And the Bible says they are blessed together with the blessed Abraham. Somebody shout and say, I am blessed. So that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. The blessing of Abraham cannot come upon the Gentiles if God did not want you to enjoy it. And the blessing of Abraham has consequences. It has consequences. Yeah? Growth. Multiplication. The Bible says when he was dying, he was rich in all things. He was blessed. Hallelujah. Why? Why does God want you blessed? Why does God want you to have some material things? It's because when you attend a wedding, you are not going there to bless them in the spirit. You are going there, Navikombe. Now clocks, you know sometimes you are blessed with a dozen clocks. Unaeka sa sitting room, corridor, back door, front door. Because 12 people in the church decides to bless you with the same clock. But if you have nothing, you can only express kindness to the extent of your resources. You can only bless somebody with what you have. So he wants you to be a blessing to others. He wants you to take care of your family. In fact, Paul says, if anybody does not take care of his immediate family, he is worse than an unbeliever. Why? Because as a believer, there are things you are blessed with to take care of your family, to take care of widows, to take care of orphans. And that requires material things. You know, there are people who fight against material things and they wake up every morning. Yeah, they wake up every morning at five o'clock they are in the, in, 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 at the bus stop to go and look for material things. Isn't it a contradiction? I decided I am a preacher of grace, I am a preacher of Christ, but I also prophesy material things. Why? Because 60% of our prayer items, oh pastor I want a job, oh pastor dead, oh pastor a house, oh pastor children. If, if all of you, your finances were sorted right now, you wouldn't have a prayer request except to glorify God. Yeah, if you look at, where are the prayer items please? The box for prayer items. If you look at that box, the prayer items that are there, many of them have to do with finances. If something is a burden to God's people, don't you think God cares about it? <laughs> if something weighs people down, don't you think God would be concerned about it? So the reason why we pray for material things, the reason why we speak it out, is not because we are not eternal in perspective. It's because we know that even when you have finances and material things, that your material things will be used to fulfill an eternal purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. That God is able. He is able. Amen. Give me that scripture. That he's able to express, he's able to give, he is able to do. He is able to give you all grace, to make all grace abound. And when it's talking about all grace abounding, it's not spiritual grace. It's grace that is accompanied with material manifestation. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and every, bless, uh, every favor and what? And earthly blessing. Come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and what? Meaning God blesses you so that when there is a need for charitable donation, you have something to give. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Amen. So it is an expression of his sovereignty. God expresses his freedom. He pours out his blessing upon us. Hallelujah. 
That is the blessing he intended for Adam and Eve and the children that would be born from them to, to live in. He wanted them to live in that blessing. He wanted them to express and, and, and enjoy that blessing. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, God made man bl and blessed them. Why did he bless them if he did not want them to live a blessed life? He wanted as they lived here, the blessing would be working in and through them. So they were meant to live in that state of blessing. You know, there is a state of blessing. It is called the Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 man. He says, whatsoever he lays his hands upon prospers. Yeah. Hallelujah. That man is blessed. Why? Because his leaves do not wither. He bears fruit in every season of his life. He doesn't have a bad season. And whatever he puts his hands to invest, to invest, to do, to work, to business, the Bible says it prospers. May this blessing be manifested in your life. May it be, may you be fruitful in the name of Jesus. May you go upward only. May you never wither. May you not know a dry season. May the blessing of the Lord sustain you. May the blessing of God take you through every season of your life bearing fruit. I declare you are like that olive tree that is planted in the house of God that bears fruit even in the old age. Even in the old age, your shares are producing. Your businesses are working. Why? Because you are blessed. When the blessing of God started to work in Isaac, the Bible says he sowed and he started to prosper. He prospered. He continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. May that be your testimony. I say, may that be your testimony. May your life be elevated by the blessing of God. May you be elevated by the grace of God. May all grace abound in you. May it abound in the work of your hands. May it abound in everything you do. Somebody shout and say, Amen. Amen. So when the blessing of God is in your life, it will manifest outward. It will be seen outward. It will be experienced outward. And that is what God intended for Adam. That as they are walking on the earth, the blessing of God is being reflected by where they live and what they are doing and how the earth is. But when they were, they fell and they got into a curse, now the world started to reflect the curse. That is why in Romans the Bible says that creation is groaning. Groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God that will arise and deliver it from its futility. Deliver it and bring it into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Why? Because the sons of God are the carriers of the, of the solution. They are the carriers of the light. They are the solution givers. They are the answer givers. You know when Jesus left us here on the earth and told us to preach the gospel, he knew that any situation that rises on the earth, the answer is there in the witnesses. The answer is there. When you go to any city, heal the sick thereof. He meant and he knew that with these people, any sickness can be healed. Any situation can be sorted. Wherever they go, no matter how dark it is, the light will shine when they enter that city. You are the solution he left on the earth. <laughs> Come on, let me look for a witness this side. You are the answer he left on the earth. He did not ascend with the answer. When he ascended, he poured out the Holy Ghost upon you. You are the answer. You are the hope of the world. You are light in darkness. Somebody shout and say, I am light. Why? That is the blessing of God manifesting. 
if you allow that blessing to maneuver you will change your entire family your brothers will be changed because of you your sisters will be changed because of you you go into a company it changes because of you you are like joseph and you are like jacob he had the audacity to tell laban when i came here your sheep were few and your goats were little but look at what i brought into your house look at how they have prospered because of my presence but believers nowadays cannot say that because they do not know what they carry we stand here and we say that we are in charge of the super highway there will not be fatal accidents here there will not be machines operating here there will be no demonic altars operating here we are in charge we are the light on this side of the city on this side of kenya we are the light somebody shout and say i am light you can only say that if you know who you are you can only say that if you know who you carry you can only say that if you are confident in what you have received but if you are bado unashuku unashuku ni nini nilipewa unashuku you are still suspicious of the power of god you are still suspicious of the holy ghost in you you are still suspicious of the grace of god at work i put you at rest it will work anywhere you go to your marketplace if there is a witch doctor next to you it is their turn to move not to you how do you wanna end up? See, kids and you in end up. When the light shines, what moves? Is it the light that moves or the darkness moves? You are not going anywhere. They are not taking your property. Why? Because you are light. And the work of light is to repel darkness. Shout it out and say, Amen. Amen. You are blessed. My God, I wish I could convince somebody today. Somebody, somebody shout and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, we are talking with my wife. Sit down, thank you. Uh, we were talking with my wife. And God, during these 21 days, for me, the 21 days has been revelation. Revelation. Ufunuo. Unajua ufunuo, capital U. Yeah, that is what God has been taking. He's been taking me through class. And one of these days, he just, we had a conversation. Do you know God talks? How many of you know God speaks? Yeah, he speaks. So he tells me. I ask him, I'm asking these questions. And he says, have confidence, number one, in my word. Have confidence in my word. Number two, he asked me, and I was preaching to my wife. He said, do you believe in the calling of God in your life? I said, yes. And he says that my calling, the calling he has called me with, is as supernatural as the calling of Paul. He did not call me with an inferior calling. <laughs> that is why, yeah, 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 some, some people are still loading. That is why he tells the Ephesians, you have faith, but you don't know your calling. You don't know your high calling. Because many of us think, we are here to an ahi, mwingine akaitu an ahi, mwingine akaitu an ahi, mwingine akaitu an ahi. Every one of you has a high calling. So me, I believe in mine. Said, I called you with a calling as supernatural as Peter. As supernatural as the calling of Paul. As supernatural and God-filled as the calling of James. As the calling of Timothy. I am not inferior just because I was born in 1930. <laughs> Amen. Are you inferior just because you were born in 1980? No. Just because you came by in 2021 is when you want to serve God. Are you inferior? Is the grace of God inferior? Is the, is the power of the Holy Spirit diluted just because you were baptized in the year 2000? Is the same spirit, man of God, the same spirit. Somebody say the same spirit. The, same spirit. the difference is we believe it differently. Bado tunaomba oh mafuta mabichi mafuta mabichi mafuta ni kama anamwagiliaga watu yasiyo mabichi ni kama kuna mabichi na yasiyo mabichi 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 
Amini. Ambia jirani yako amini. Amini. Can I tell you the next thing he told me? That the name of Jesus is still as powerful as when Paul used it. Minister Peter, the name of Jesus is not weaker because you are the one speaking it. The authority, the power of the name of Jesus does not change. Can I tell you what changes? The conviction of the person using it. The boldness and the confidence of the person using it. In Acts chapter 3, 16, they are asked, how does this cripple walk? He said, by faith in the name of Jesus. By faith in that name, this cripple is well. All right? So that name never changes its power. Its power remains the same. Somebody shout and say, in the name of Jesus. That, the way you have said it is the way Paul said it. And Ephesus was shaken. Malta was shaken. Rome was shaken. The ends of the earth were shaken. But the difference is that they believed in what they were saying. They believed in the power in that name. Believe in the Holy Spirit you have received. Believe in the grace that is working in you. Believe in the name of Jesus. Philip said, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? He said, these are the works of God. Simple. That you believe in the one he sent. It's not a formula. Believe in the one he has sent. One as if he were. So, in his sovereignty, created Adam blessed. And he has saved you and redeemed you and me. And in his sovereignty, he has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. An expression of his grace. Why? Because his grace is multifaceted. Multiple facets of the grace of God. Expressed in many, million, millions, infinite ways. Amen. So the first man, Adam, had a life. Somebody say life. Number two, he had knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Knowledge in those three dimensions. The three kinds of knowledge. Number one, epignosis. Accurate knowledge of God. Somebody say epignosis. Number two, phronesis. Phronesis means wisdom. Christ has been made unto us power and wisdom. He had wisdom. He had accurate knowledge, epignosis of God. Hey. Number three, he had sunesis. That is understanding. Supernatural or spiritual understanding. He knew how the spirit word works. He knew spiritual things and how they were. He understood spiritual language. How many of you believe that when God came to talk to him in the garden, he was still spirit? God has always been spirit. The only time God had a body was when Christ was born. But even in the garden, he was spirit. Do you agree with me, preacher? Yeah, he was pre spirit. But he could walk with spirit. And hear spirit. And understand spirit. And be able to interpret spiritual language. Why? Because he had understanding. And Paul prays for them in Colossians 1. That you may be filled with spiritual understanding. Usiishi kama mtu waelewi mambo ya kiro. Ishi kama mtu ambaya naelewa siri za kiroho. Unanielewa? Mwana wasifiwe. Number three, he was righteous. How many you believe that he was righteous? He had the image of God. He was without sin. He was, sin had never entered. Sin was unknown. So he was righteous. Praise the name of Jesus. He had God's image. Number four, he had perfect fellowship. And communion with God. He had communion and fellowship with God. There was no separation. There was no disagreement. There was no distance. Hey, hallelujah. He had communion with God. Amen. He had dominion over the earth. You believe so? He had dominion. 
But when he fell, these are the things he lost. Alright? So the curse is manifested in the loss. In the loss of life, so he became a natural man. No spiritual life. No Zoe. No God kind of life. He lost righteousness and the one who was righteous became sin. He took the nature of sin. Are you getting me? The one who had the knowledge in the place of knowledge was darkness. Spiritual darkness. Foolishness. Ignorance of God and the ways of God. He lost knowledge. He lost righteousness. He lost spiritual life. He lost fellowship and communion with God. The one that walked with God now was separated. Did not know God. The Bible says it's your sins that have separated me from you. Praise the name of Jesus. He lost dominion. He lost dominion. And the one that was supposed to rule and reign on the earth became a slave. <clears throat> I told you that the, the fall was so bad that man started to worship creeping things. You remember in the book of Romans chapter 1, they started to worship lizards. Gecko. Can you imagine? Gecko. That is what they started to worship. Creeping things. They would bow before them. They reduce themselves to less than the creeping things. If they can call a lizard a god, or a snake a god, or an eagle a god, or a falcon a god, an animal, they call it a god. How low have they sunk? Somebody say very low. But Jesus comes, and by his death on the cross, he restores everything and more. He gives you back life. Somebody say, I have life. Shout it out and say, I have Zoe. Shout it out and say, I have the life of God. Yes. You have God's kind of life in you. That is what the cross was able to achieve. Number two. Yeah. It has been restored to you knowledge. To you, it has been given to know spiritual things. You can discern spiritual things. You can know God. Today God can talk to you. And you hear. Wangapi hapa muneza sikia mungu wa kiwaongeleja. Mwana asifiwe. Kama huwezi ni naomba mungu wa kuongeleja. Akuamushe akuongeleja. Usikia utamu wa sauti yake. Iyo sauti ambayi napasua miya ambayi natuliza miyoyo. So he has restored knowledge. Somebody shout and say, I know. I know. Now it is possible for you to know God. Now it is possible for you to have epignosis, an accurate knowledge of God. For you to have wisdom. For you to have understanding. And you live in that understanding. So your life is not by chance. Your life is informed by knowledge. Your life is informed by wisdom. Your life is informed by understanding. Somebody shout and say, I understand. Okay? Before, their life was according to impulses. Impulses, desires, instincts of the fallen nature. But now, we don't live by instinct. We, lie, we live by divine mysteries. We live by understanding. We live by knowledge. Number three. Righteousness. Now, me and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. How many righteous people are here? Wengine bado mnajishuku. If you are the righteousness of God in Christ, in what one? Amen. Praise God. Number four, now you have communion with God. You have fellowship with God. The Bible says we have unbroken fellowship with him. He has called us into the communion of his son. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. Somebody shout and say always. Communion, number five, we now have dominion. Dominion in the grace covenant. Now, where are you going, pastor? This is where I was going. <clears throat> Adam was given an instruction by God. Was told, eat everything, but don't eat that tree. And his continued blessing, dominion, righteousness, depended on his ability not to eat the tree. So he had to discipline himself every time he passed near that tree. Or every time he saw it, he had to really try by himself not to touch that tree. Why? Because his blessing and the blessing of the children that would come through him depended on that. On him avoiding that tree. Praise the name of Jesus. But within the grace of God, our righteousness has come from a tree. Jesus dying on a tree. He died on the tree and fulfilled all righteousness because Ab Adam's place of failure was as far as that tree was concerned. The day he touched that tree, he failed. Righteousness was lost. Dominion was lost. Life was lost. Communion with God was lost. Just because he touched that tree. But when Jesus went and hung on that tree on Calvary, life was given to us. Righteousness was given to us. Dominion was regained. Now we are blessed. Why? Because he conquered the powers of darkness. And he obeyed God and fulfilled righteousness on the tree. Where Adam, the first Adam lost it. This is where the second or the last Adam won the battle for us. He disarmed principalities. He made a public spectacle over, the spect the spectacle over them in it. In what? In the cross. In the cross, he took every decree, every argument that was against you. He nailed it to the cross. The condemnation that had come upon Adam was nailed on that tree. The sicknesses, the powers of darkness, any argument against you that was there, any decree and its legal requirement, he nailed it to the tree. So where there was loss is the same place where the son of God, the son of man, our brother Jesus got the victory for us. Praise the name of Jesus. And when he got the victory, just like when Adam lost it, when he lost it because of one man's sin, sin spread to everybody and death spread to everybody. But when this man went to the tree and died there and obeyed the Father even unto death, the Bible says the benefits that have come from the cross of Jesus Christ have spread to many. Many have been made righteous. Many are free. Many are victorious. Many are healed. Many are prosperous. More, many are reigning and ruling. Why? Because of Jesus Christ upon that tree. Therefore, the grace covenant means that while Adam had to sustain the blessing by himself, no, us, we receive the blessing by the works of another. It's called the covenant of a, by the works of another. By the works of Christ, I'm blessed. By the works of Christ, I'm free. By the works of Christ, I'm delivered. By the works of Christ, I'm redeemed. By the works of Christ, I'm healed. By the works of Christ, I'm blessed. By the works of Christ, I'm favored. By the works of Christ, I reign. Somebody shout and say, yes. It's called the grace covenant. That is the covenant that me and you are under. Praise the name of Jesus. Understanding covenant is the center of understanding God's relationship between us and God. God does not relate with people without a covenant. A covenant is a commitment from God. It is a covenant. It's not an agreement. We don't agree. We don't negotiate. We don't haggle with God. We do not bargain and negotiate with God. We receive what he has given us. We accept 
what he has given us. We embrace what he has given us. And by receiving it, embracing it, and believing it, we enjoy the privileges of it. Bible says those who believed in him, those who received him, they were given the right to be called the children of God. They accepted him. They believed in him. I have accepted Christ. I have believed in Christ. I have accepted the blood that it sets me free. I have accepted the cross that it is there he died for me and every curse was destroyed. I have accepted by his stripes I was healed. I have embraced it and I have accepted that every sacrifice he gave was for me. For me personally. Hallelujah. And that is how you live and express, experience the covenant of grace. Somebody shout and say amen. The grace, the covenant of grace. Covenant has to have four basic elements. Let me show, give you this and then we break until, un, until tomorrow. Tomorrow we are meeting. Are we still fasting? Bado mefunga mamuna mulituacha tuskume. Bado bado tuko pamoja, si ndio? Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Even if you're fasting up to six o'clock, it's okay. But be there. Mona as if you were sana. So we meet tomorrow. Amen. It's getting better, it's getting sweeter. Amen. The covenant has four basic elements. Number one, it has a promise. Somebody say a promise. A covenant has a sacrifice. Amen. Ratified by sacrifice and blood. Number three, condition. All right. So the condition of Adam remaining blessed was what? Him not eating the, the fruit. That, that was the condition. The condition of him remaining alive spiritually was him not eating the fruit. Hallelujah. But when Jesus died on the cross, he said one condition. What's the condition? Only believe. So the work is not yours. The work is Christ's. Bonas if he were. Hallelujah. But you still need to live in righteousness. You live as he has left you. I don't know about you, when my mother washed me when I was a boy, Amen. Every covenant had a consequence. The consequence was either blessing or curse. So for Adam, continued obedience and avoiding the fruit meant continued life, continued dominion, continued righteousness. But the day they ate that fruit, that was the end of the benefit. And then another consequence started. It's called the curse. Are you getting me? It's called the Adamic curse, which Christ has delivered us from. So what we do is we continue to walk in him. Somebody shout and say, in him I live. Shout it out and say, I walk in Christ. Yes, you continue to live in him. Number five, every curse had a mediator, a guarantor of that, of, of that covenant. I beg your pardon. Of that covenant, every covenant had a mediator. Or a what? Garanta. Alright? He is the one that ensured that that which was in the covenant was followed. Meaning, he had access to both parties. So Jesus comes. He dies. He has access to us and he has access to the Father. To the Father he ever liveth to make intercession for us. We have one mediator before God. And that is the man Jesus Christ. What is he mediating? What he has finished for you. On what basis is he interceding? 
Is he saying, Lord, oh, Father, bless them. Ona vile wanajaribu. Ona vile wanangengana. Wabariki tu. Sympathetic blessings. Are those, is this what is interceding? No. Hallelujah. Somebody shout and say mediator. He mediates an everlasting covenant. So that covenant is perfect. That covenant is everlasting. Why is it perfect? It cannot be improved. Why is it perfect? It has accomplished in people what God always wanted to accomplish. It has delivered in your life, life. It has delivered into you righteousness. It has delivered into you everything that God wanted you to have. Now you have dominion. Now you are an heir. Now you are co heir together with Christ. On the basis of the grace covenant, everything that belongs to God now belongs to us. Everything that belongs to Jesus now belongs to us. Now we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Is there another covenant that can achieve that? Is there a covenant that could have achieved the union with Christ? That we say, me and Christ are one. We have been united. Amen. That is why it is perfect. That is why God said, after this there can never be an improvement. After this there can never be another. After this there cannot be an adjustment. There cannot be an update. There cannot be an upgrade. Because this is the best. Why? It gives them everything that I am. And it gives them everything that I have. It gives them the right to use my name. It gives them the right to have my spirit in them. It gives them my inheritance. It causes them to be enthroned together with me. Ah. Somebody shout and say the best covenant. Why is it the best? Because this is the only covenant that bears no curse. It has no curse. The gospel doesn't carry a curse. In fact, let me tell you, if you are here some years ago, I preached this, but I will do it for your sake. He said that even if we go to a city and they reject us and they molest, I mean they persecute us, the Bible says that, that what we are supposed to do, we cannot curse them. We dust the feet. We dust our feet and we walk away. We go to another. The Bible says it will be unbearable for them in that day. In the day of judgment. It will be unbearable in that day. God has not given us the right to go cursing villages. And cursing towns. And cursing cities. And the people. We don't go cursing people. Why? Because if you are a gospel person, the gospel has no curse. In fact, the gospel says, pray for your enemies. Pray, bless those who spitefully use you. You cannot, there is no fountain that can bring both dirty and clean water. So you are a fountain of what? Of clean water. Somebody say, I am a blessing priest. You bless people. You bless your nation. You bless your leaders. Hata tukiona kuna drama inakana mnagan. We bless even our political leaders. And we pray that God will give us others that are very sensitive. One as if you, we don't curse. Praise the name of Jesus. Why? The new covenant has no curse. It's the only covenant that God gave. It's so perfect. Why? It doesn't have a curse. Why? Because when anybody gets into this covenant, they become curseless. That's how beautiful it is to live without a curse. Sisi tunamuka ku enjoy goodness na mercy. Kwa sababu utajuaje imevunjika. Kama damu ya yesu haikuvunja, utajuaje imevunjika. Utasikia kwa. Utajuaje imevunjika. How will you know? 
Somebody shout and say, I'm castless. Say, I'm castless. I'm castless. So if you go somewhere in the first service, this service, I won't have time. In the first service, I broke, I, I rebuked every divination. Every argument introduced into the mind and the spirits of God's people. Where they live lives with words that are competing. And the problem is, the people of God have submitted to both. They come to church, they are told you are blessed. And then they went to a false prophet. And that is why you need an authority to stand and quiet that voice. Now in the first service, ni menyamazisha sauti. Pinga mizi za kila aina. Zile ambazo zinasema uwezi endelea. Ni nanyamazisha katika jina la yesu. Iyo sauti liye zungumza ambayo siyo ya mungu. Maneno ambayo siya roo mtakatifu. Ni nayafutili ambali. Ni nayanyamazisha katika jina la yesu. Na ni nasema katika maisha yako. It is the word of God that prevails. It is the word of God that is having its way. I cancel every argument, every inconsistency. Roo wa wote ambaye anakupinga katika jina la Yesu kwa sababu ya maneno yaliyotajwa. Leo hii ninamkemea. Ninamkemea kwa jina la Yesu. Milango yako ifunguke, barabara zako zinyoke, milima iwe tambarare katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Sema ndio. We silence those voices. I saw it. I saw the people. There is a tug of war. A fighting. It's like in the tummy of Rebecca. Two nations fighting. One pulling. We and 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 I'm saying in Jesus' name, it doesn't matter who they are. Today their voice is stifled. Their voice is muffled. In Jesus' name. Hayo maneno kuanzia leo ya mekosa nguvu. Neno la mungu ndio linafanya kazi katika maisha yako. Give the word of God away. Give it leeway in your life. That is why you wake up and confess the word of God. You don't let any word fall on you. Any word to work. Mtu anakuambia wewe inaonekana unamwambia eh uko serious. No, 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 no. Means kuulize if me I know what I am. I am an heir of God. I'm a co-heir together with Christ. I am favored for a lifetime. For how long? For a season. For how long are you favored? Yeah. A lifetime, my Jaisha. So you're still favored. With or without Corona. You are still favored. Usikubali sauti ingine. Na musiende uko vichochoro, vichochoro, vichochoro. Bana asifiwe. Please don't go. Don't submit yourself. He said, for freedom, Christ has made you free. Do not submit yourself. I refuse. Somebody say, I refuse. I defy any other word. Any contrary word that is not in line with the covenant of grace in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. Some of them, they try to put you back into the same slavery you are delivered from. Anakuambia, ile kitu dami ya Yesu ilishindwa kufanya. Ulete mbegu. Ndiyo hiyo mbegu itaweza kukufanya. Inaweza kana kweli? Solomon alitoa ngapi? 10,000. There was a river. A small stream of blood because of his offering. Alitoa mingi mbaka wakaamisha madhabau wakapeleka uko inje. Ndiyo watu wanze kuzichinja. 10,000. Mbaka hiyo mali yote Jerusalem ikanuka nyama. I tell you, when the people finished sacrificing, they came to scrap fat from the altar. Walikuwa wanankata mafuta. Si unajua mshuma vile ina melt. Ivo ndiyo mafuta ilikuwa. Na iyo hiku mbadilisha hata kidogo. This is Jubilee Christian Church Thika Road. Je
agenda of me being crucified with Christ was to eradicate that old person that was incompatible with God. That man was killed on the cross. The reality of the fact in Christianity is we are born of the Spirit, but we are discipled by the Word. Welcome, Welcome to, to Jubilee, Jubilee Christian, Christian Church, Church Thicker Road. Understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of God that is in you. We, we preach Christ.